A major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. Many of those biomarkers are shown here. In today's video, we'll focus on the cardiovascular biomarkers, systolic and diastolic blood pressure. More specifically, how does blood pressure change during aging? And then also, what's my data? And then can age-related blood pressure changes be improved? So let's jump into the data. So let's start off with systolic blood pressure, which is plotted on the y-axis of this chart. And on the x, we've got age from 18 to 95 years old. And this study included about 386,000 people. If anyone's come across lar a larger epidemiological study demonstrating age-related changes to blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, greater than 386,000 people, please post it in the comments and I'd be happy to include it in a future video and give you a shout out. So in this study, we can see that systolic blood pressure increases during aging both for data it, uh, with, for men in green and women in blue. All right, so what about diastolic blood pressure changes? And that's what we can see here. So we can see that it increases up until about 50 to 60 years, followed by a decrease for the next 40 years. So for diastolic blood pressure, it increases and then decreases during aging. Now, when considering the eight inverted U for diastolic blood pressure, how can we know if a low diastolic blood pressure is reflective of youth or older age? And that's where considering the systolic blood pressure value comes into effect. So at older ages, we'd expect to see a low diastolic blood pressure in conjunction with a high systolic blood pressure. Conversely, at younger ages, we'd expect to see a low diastolic blood pressure in conjunction with a low systolic blood pressure. So with that in mind, what's my data? Now, based on age expected blood pressure, based on what's shown here, we'd expect to see 125 over 77 for systolic and diastolic, respectively. And we can see that plotted there. So that, that data for 50 to 60 year olds as my chronological age is 51 years would be a relatively higher systolic and diastolic relative to youthful values, which based on the data here presented here in this study, youthful blood pressure values, average youthful blood pressure values were 118 over 67 for men and 108 over 65 for women. Now I should note that I'd say that these are the upper limit there are smaller epidemiological studies. I have one in mind that included about 6,000 people where the average blood pressure was 100 over 60 in 20 year olds. So for me, that optimal range for blood pressure would be from 100 over 60 to 118 over 67 for men and 108 over 65 for women. That, that would be my optimal range. If anyone's got data that contradicts that, please post it in the comments. Let's all have that discussion. All right, so what's my data? So we're about to take a look at systolic blood pressure. This is uh, over the past 14 months from September of 2022 through December, early December of 2023. And this is 170 different days of data. And note that I'm not using anything fancy. This is a standard blood pressure cuff. It's an automated system. I actually use a brand that's pretty close to what's shown here. And then some notes. For every one of the 170 measurements, they're between 11.30 and 1 p.m., but more specifically, almost all of those measurements are between 11.30 and 12 p.m. I try to standardize the time to minimize any potential variability in blood pressure measurements as a result of measuring earlier in the day versus later in the day. So I measure it at the exact same time for all of these or pretty close to exactly the same time for all of these measurements. I take the average of five to six tests over about a 15 to 20 minute period for each of the tests because there can be variability in the measurement. So rather than testing once and just recording that, I take the average of five to six tests within that 15 to 20 minute time window. And then each of these 170 measurements are exactly four to five hours after eating or drinking. So I eat most of my day's calories on for each of these 170 measurements by 7.30. And when considering that the blood pressure measurements are at about 11.30, that's at least four hours, no eating or drinking. So I've standardized these three things for all of the 170 tests to try to minimize day-to-day -day variability in blood pressure. All right, so in terms of the data, when I first started measuring in September of 2022, we can see that it was pretty close to age expected, somewhere around 123 millimeters of mercury. But then we can see that it's been reduced over the past 14 months, such that average systolic blood pressure in November of 2023 over 14 tests was 117 millimeters of mercury, so on the right track. What about diastolic blood pressure? So over the same 170 tests, 14 month span, we can see that when I started in September of 2022, it was also close to age expected, 73 millimeters of mercury. I've also reduced diastolic blood pressure over those 14 months. And we can see that the average diastolic blood pressure in November of 2023 
was 69 millimeters of mercury over 14 tests. So from both of these data, we can see that I've consistently reduced blood pressure since September of, of 2022, over the past 14 months. So then the question is how? One factor that may be involved in these data is body weight. So I weigh, I weigh myself every morning. I've done that for probably since 2015 or so. Uh, and this is a fasted in the morning body weight. And that's on the same day as each of these blood pressure measurements. So in other words, I have body weight data that corresponds to the blood pressure that was measured on the same day. But before getting into that, when I first started tracking body weight here for the in September of 2022, it was 151 pounds. And I know based on DEXA performed in uh, December of 2022, that my body fat percentage was 12.9%. So already relatively lean, but uh, an age expected blood pressure pretty close to my chronological age uh, in September of 2022. And then we can see that I've uh, reduced body weight over the past 14 months, such that my average body weight in November of 20, 2023 was closer to 141 pounds, about a 10 pound weight loss. So then it raises the question, what's my uh, body fat percentage now relative to last year? And I'm measuring that next Wednesday. So stay tuned for that data coming uh, probably very soon. All right, so these are just trends. Is body weight significantly correlated with blood pressure? And that's what we'll see here. So. We're going to take a look at systolic blood pressure versus body weight, and then also diastolic versus body weight. And this is over those same 170 tests, body weight measurements on the same day as uh, measured on the same day as blood pressure. And I'm going to put both of the data up at the same time because the trend goes or the correlations go in the same direction. And we can see that there are significant positive correlations for body weight with both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. In other words, a relatively higher body weight is significantly correlated with higher systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And conversely, a relatively lower body weight is significantly correlated with lower systolic and diastolic blood pressures. So from these data, we can see that in my case, a lower body weight is significantly correlated with more youthful blood pressure. Now, if, you've paid it to, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll, you'll notice that uh, this trend is becoming apparent of a relatively lower body weight and leanness or being more lean relative to last year's 12.9% body fat is significantly correlated with many biomarkers going in the right direction versus wrong. For example, improved resting heart rate and heart rate variability, uh, an increased percentage of slow wave sleep. And in an upcoming video, I'll also detail many other biomarkers that are going in the right direction versus wrong in terms of being correlated with a lower body weight, in terms of how those biomarkers change during aging and their associations with all cause mortality risk. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic and telomere testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome testing, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, different panel than the metabolomic, metabolomics, diet tracking, green tea, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.